Hi there, I'm uh, Raja Rao. I'm one of the developer evangelists for uh, Salesforce. I've been learning Swift for a week or so now. And today I would like to give you a taste of Swift programming language by showing you how to integrate it in an existing Salesforce iOS app. So if you don't know anything about Swift, Swift is actually a brand new programming language that Apple announced their WWDC conference uh, last week. So the nice thing about Swift is that it is statically typed like uh, Java or Objective-C, but it uses some really advanced techniques like uh, type inference and stuff to make the syntax look very similar to a scripting language like JavaScript or Ruby, etc. So if you are coming from JavaScript world, um, I think it's going to be a lot easier to uh, write native iOS apps now um, as opposed to just writing it in Objective-C. But the other nice thing about Swift is that it can coexist with Objective-C, which means uh, you can still use your existing Objective-C project and add a Swift file to it and get started with Swift. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. So, so what you're seeing is a sample native iOS app that uses uh, Salesforce SDK that I created from our native iOS mobile pack by going to this website and clicking on iOS and clicking on native tab and following all these instructions. And the other thing you're seeing here is a brand new Xcode editor. It's actually Xcode 6 beta 2 that I downloaded from uh, Apple's developer center. So you, and I downloaded by going to this tab and from over here and by the way uh, one thing to make sure is you need Mavericks for Xcode 6 beta 2 to work because Swift only works in Xcode 6. Okay let me switch to Xcode and run the app as it is to just to show you how it works. So, uh, started the emulator and logging into Salesforce. So all it does is after we log in, it simply makes a call to Salesforce and gets names of top 10 accounts. And all the heavy lifting is actually done by root view controller, which as you can see is a table view controller, which creates a table and also implements a Salesforce REST delegate to make REST calls to Salesforce. And when the response comes back, uh, it actually populates the table. So if you look into the root view controller.m, you will see it actually making a sample query to Salesforce and also populating the data to table. So what I'm going to do now is to rewrite this whole uh, root view controller in Swift. So first thing first, let's create a, a Swift class called root VC. So I'm going to go to new Google touch class and this is a table view controller, so I'm going to say VC, and the language is Swift. And when I do that, it actually asks me to create a object to see bridging header. So this is just a header file, uh, this is just a global header file that helps Swift talk back and forth between object to see. Uh, now let's take a look at our root vc.swift file. So this is our new Swift file. So first thing we need to do is to go to the root view controller header file and see all the things that it is importing and put it in the bridging header like so. Next, let's make our root vc file implement the sfrest delegate protocol like so. And next up, we need to import this root VC into our app delegate in our object to C world. So to do that, you do you say import and within a project name dash swift.h. It's an auto-generated header file that helps Objective-C no, uh, interact with Swift. So now that we have imported the Swift file, let's change the root view controller to use our new Swift uh, controller. So as you can see, the autocomplete is all working. Root VC. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and build this. So build a succeeded. But if I comment out our root view controller and then build it again, you'll see that it is throwing an error. That's because this auto-generated error file is trying to compile our Swift class before it has loaded our Salesforce SDK. One of the ways to solve this is to import our bridging header before we import our um, Swifty dash Swift header file. So now if I run it again, it now works fine. Okay, at this point, we have successfully connected our Swift file and Objective-C and Salesforce SDK. Now, all we need to do is to update our Swift file to actually make call to Salesforce and get the results. Okay, to keep this video short, I'm going to copy a fully working code and then I'll go over it one by one. I'll actually compare it with Objective-C so you get a better perspective. Yeah, what you're seeing here is on the left hand side the old root view controller WTC code and on the right hand side the new Swift code. So one thing to notice here is there is no .h and .m files uh, in Swift. There is just a one .swift file. So other thing to note here is that there are no imports. The only thing you'll import are the frameworks. Now let's talk about the data rows. Uh, data rows are simply arrays that um, stores all the account names or the user names from Salesforce. Um, so in WTC, we were creating a property, an anatomic strong, NSRA, data rows, and then synthesize it. Whereas in um, Swift, all you need to do is var data rows equals NSRA. That's pretty much uh, what you need to do. Now, if you come to the method declaration, uh, view did load. This is a method that is called when the view is loaded but not just not yet presented. So again, look at the method declaration. Whereas the same thing in a, in a Swift looks like uh, it's an overridden function from the superclass. Uh, so it kind of makes it very easy for you to understand what's going on here. And now if we scroll down and if you take a look at how to make a call uh, to our rest uh, to our Salesforce SDK sending a shared instance message to REST API class. And then we are uh, using the REST API to create a query and then finally making the call itself. Uh, whereas on the Swift side, you can see that it is much more readable. So we are simply calling a method on REST API class. So it is a class method. And then it is uh, further creating a request and finally making a REST call. So one additional thing I had to do uh, for the Swift code to work is to register our UI table view cell. I'm not sure why I had to do it, but um, without that, it was uh, breaking. So I added that. So now if you look into um, our one of the delegates, so this is the form method that is called once the response comes back from Salesforce. Now. On the left hand side, if you try to read this, it's very hard to read, especially if you are not from Objective-C. Whereas on the right hand side, uh, the same function looks a little familiar, but also strange. Let me go into details. So you have a function call called request that happens to take two parameters. One is a request and the other one is JSON response. Ignore the remaining things for now. So all it does is once it gets the JSON response, um, in this case from Salesforce server, it is going to search for the key called records which happens to be one of the keys inside the JSON response, and then converts it into an NS array and stores it into this variable. And, and after that, it stores it into our data rows array. And finally, it makes a, an asynchronous request to get the main queue, uh, because that's where the UI is. And once it gets the thread, it simply reloads the table. So now let's take a look at what these two things are here. Swift is a type safe language, so you need to explicitly specify the type of the parameter. So in this case, the request happens to be of type SF REST request and JSON response happens to be of type any object. So any object is similar to ID in Objective-C, which means any object, it could be any of any type. And one thing to note here is that if I go back 
to the data rows, I could actually explicitly specify the data rows is of type NS array as well, but I don't have to because that's optional because it uses type inferencing by to look on the right hand side and figure out the data rows is of type NS array. So that's why the syntax is very elegant. Coming back to this, so let's take a look at what this question mark is. This is a new feature of Swift. It simply means that this particular uh, property could be nil. So, which means we need to handle this, although I'm not handling it here. The idea is that you are expecting that property to be optional. Now, let's take a look at this particular variable here. So, this is actually called as a named parameter. So, this parameter itself has a name. This, I think, um, uh, you know, Swift has to kind of make the transition from Objective C to Swift and Swift to Objective C a lot easier uh, because in Objective C, if you look at it, uh, most of the methods are, are broken up into multiple parts like here request and then did load response. So to make this kind of uh, function seamlessly transferred to Swift, it provides an additional feature called uh, named properties. So in this case, if you're calling this function, uh, the way you would call this is request and let's say nil and then blah. So instead of just instead of this, you you could say did did load response colon blah. Let's scroll down and see what else is different. So here again, you know this ns log. This is how we used to create a string and you know with this at sign and percentage at sign and stuff. Now we don't have to do any such thing. You simply say println and any kind of object that you want to print, you just uh, prepend a backslash and uh, these braces and you're good to go. So the other thing to note here is uh, another new thing uh, in Swift is that if a function has a written type, then you need to explicitly specify that right in the method signature itself like like this i'm looking at the last uh, function here this is uh, as you can see pretty much one there is a one to one translation between for each line uh, i'm not going to go into the detail but you kind of get the idea and you should be able to go from here and that's pretty much it from me um, hopefully you guys got an idea as to how the Swift works and how to use it in Objective-C projects and how easy it is as opposed to Objective-C and hopefully start learning Swift along with me. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at rajaradv. Thank you very much for watching.